So I'm at the beginning, what created life? Now I was taught there was this big bang. The entire universe was contained in a single tiny point until there was this explosion of energy. Things expanded and then cooled and life grew. And I kind of believe that. Some very smart people are convinced that's the way it went down. But did some god cause the Big Bang? And how did humans happen? Is there an intelligent designer, a god? Yes, says Dinesh D'Souza, who's passionate about Christianity. No, says Michael Shermer, founder of Skeptic Magazine. So, no, how do you know? You can't be certain. Well, I can't be certain there's no God, but I can be reasonably confident as a social scientist that the anthropology of religion, the psychology of religion shows that people invent gods to explain causality in the world. You want to know why there's storms, why there's accidents, why do people die, why did the tree fall over? From hunter-gatherers all the way up to the modern world, humans construct gods to explain things. And they're all, they, these are different gods, different religions. And so we've come down to monotheism, but what are the chances that those 999 other gods are false gods, and this one is the one true god that most people happen to believe in today, or that they're all socially constructed, psychologically constructed? Dinesh, well, yeah, what are the chances? Well, um, I think when we think about God, you could almost think about a tall mountain. God's at the top of it. None of us can see him. We're standing at the base. And we're just seeing these little tributaries of, of information come down. And the different religions are efforts to, to call what's at the top. It's not surprising that they tell a slightly different story, but they're all looking in the same direction. So I would say all the 999 uh, uh, religions are right in positing a transcendent God, a deity that actually is responsible How do you know? for all. What's the evidence? It's, it's an inference to an explanation. In other words, you've got to give an explanation for how it all got here. Right? So you can, you can take Michael's explanation, which is that material things are all there are. There's nothing else. But that actually is also a leap of faith. He's assuming that there are only material things and there's nothing else. Well, it's not a leap of faith. It's a, it's a level of confidence gained from 500 years of science consistently and reliably finding causes of effects and displacing religion as the mechanism to explain things. Michael, science, isn't it an assumption of modern science that material reality is all there is? It is an assumption because exactly. it works. Because it works. Because it works, but it's the testable. explanation of God works too. Don't you think for hundreds of years people have believed in God because it has worked in yes. that it has made sense of their life? Maybe because they them? were ignorant. They didn't have any other. They, uh, they had no other explanation for lightning. Uh, well, that was true of ancient man, but. Just as scientific knowledge progresses, there's no reason religious knowledge can't progress. One of the things about science is it takes the trump card of saying we get to get smarter over time, but religious people don't. So we're going to now judge religious people by what they believed 10,000 years before. But religion doesn't change much. Sure it does. If you look at religion, first of all, there's an evolution within religion from a polytheism to monotheism. But second, even within religion, see, one of the things is I think religious people learn from other types of knowledge. So, for example, the Bible says God made the universe and God made man, but the Bible doesn't say how. So I see no problem in saying I can learn from evolution, I can learn from the Big Bang. It's a way of sort of filling out. The Bible says seven days. Well, the Bible says seven days, but from the third or fourth century, Christians have believed that those seven days refer to eras. I just want to add something before you respond, and that Michael has been on the show debating this topic before he debated a priest. And afterward, I got lots of email from people who said, you shouldn't have had that priest on, you should have had an apologist. An apologist? I have no idea what that is. I thought that was someone who apologizes. It turns out an apologist is someone who does what Dinesh does, who argues why there's a God? Well, uh, it comes from the Greek word apologia, which means to give a defense. It has nothing to do with making an apology or, or kind of um, repenting uh, for something. And I want to emphasize that apologetics is done on the basis of reason alone. It doesn't appeal to scripture. It doesn't appeal to revelation. It's based on the same language of reason. And, uh, and that's, that's, that leaves room for a skeptical attitude toward the world. Let's bring in two scientists. Ian Hutchinson is a Christian who teaches nuclear physics at MIT. Lawrence Krauss is a physicist from Arizona State, and he's an atheist whose new book asserts that the universe came from nothing. Nothing? Absolutely. The key question is when you, when you have this kind of debate, does, do you need a God? Is a God necessary? Um, is there evidence for God? 
And is it rational to believe in, in, in a God? The answer is sort of, you, no, 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 no. All, all, no, no, no. You don't, you don't need God to create something from nothing. The natural laws do it all the time. And there's a, the, 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 the ancient distinction between something and nothing, like most of the ancient ideas that Zanish has talked about, are, are now been changed or thrown out by science. Uh, there's absolutely no evidence that there's any purpose to the universe. And it's clearly not rational. For, forgive me, Nish, it's just not ra It's much more rational, as Michael suggested, to force your beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality rather than the other way around. Ian Hutchinson, I I'm impressed. You're, you're a professor of nuclear science, so I, I take it that you look at the evidence, and yet you're confident that there's a God. I am, and I'd like to respond to what Lawrence just said. His book doesn't offer us a God, um, doesn't offer us a, a, a universe free of God. It doesn't offer us a universe from nothing. What Lawrence offers us is a universe from the laws of physics. And I would hope that he, as a fellow physicist, would agree that the laws of physics aren't nothing. Well, right, actually, why do you think there is an intelligent design? What convinced you? What convinces me most about the truth of Christianity is the person, the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That seems to me to be evidence. It's not scientific evidence. So if you insist that scientific evidence is the only type of evidence that you will listen to, then you will, yes, rule out religion, but you will also rule out a whole host of other types of human knowledge, like history or, or it, philosophy it, it, and so on. Let, let, me, let me jump in for a second. So you're convinced by the resurrection, which you say is consistent with the laws, with the laws of nature. It certainly isn't. I mean, generally, arriving from the it's dead has not science. been consistent with biology or physics. And then you're convinced by it. But, but what evidence do you have that it happened? Essentially, this is an argument about whether or not miracles are possible, because the resurrection is a miracle. And of course, water into wine. That's so. right. So the key question is, is, can we say, based on anything we know, that scientific law Laws are true always and everywhere, and there are no exceptions to them. Notice that even Lawrence doesn't say that. He slipped in the word probably. Because, because, science, because, science because it was the way. philosopher Hume 200 years ago who pointed out that from no amount of empirical generalizations, however large, can you draw a conclusion that is true as a matter of logic. All you can say is that every time we've measured light, it goes at speed c. But you don't know that on a star, a hundred light years away, it goes at that speed. We've never we measured. Do. We do. We've measured. We it. assume it. No, we, we measure it. You the measure spectra it the of the, the light emitted by that star is directly related to the speed of light by the laws of electromagnetism. Right, and you can measure that. Too science wonky for me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you two believers I, I believe a... that people are good because of religion, and wouldn't be otherwise. <laughs> No, I think that there is a universal morality built into the human nature. But I also think that religion historically is the transmission belt for teaching morality. I mean, think of how few people have learned their morality from Kant or Hegel or Schopenhauer. People have learned their morality from Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism. I have a, I have a problem with the resurrection. Uh, so you believe that Jesus was the Son of God and God incarnate also, right? Three in one, one in three. You're a monotheist, correct? Hey, okay. Well, so A Trinitarian. Actually. A Trinitarian. But, 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 but Jesus is Lord, right? So, as I understand it, for us to be saved, God sacrificed himself to himself to save us from himself. <laughs> this sounds to me incomprehensible, barking mad. Barking mad. Why do you think that it's barking mad? We have well over three, two and a half billion Christians in the world, right? Would you be so arrogant as to claim that one-third of the human race is barking mad? Well, the logic is barking mad. The people themselves are not barking mad. Well, but Why they are. They believe but, but the so other, but the other three, most Americans. I think we but the other three if, billion if, people don't accept Jesus as their Savior. No, but, we but, but they, they also, believe, they also that's, believe things you would call barking mad. I mean, this is my point. Is It's one thing to say that you know a bunch of Texans who are having beer and saw a UFO are out of their minds. But to actually claim that the entire human race is nuts. The logic of the argument. And we Texans, we're not saying anything. <laughs> no, no, but I think the point is that humans are clearly hardwired to want to believe. As, as Michael was saying, we created gods from the time we, we've been human. And we have to recognize as scientists that we want to believe, and we have to work against that. We have an experiment that gets an interesting result. We want to believe it's significant, but we have to check to see if it really is. And most of the time, it isn't. Similarly, yeah, Leo believed Newton, Kepler. Yeah, well, they were products. They were products of their time. And how, the point is, we don't, and we don't talk about <laughs> we don't so. talk about Newton because of his Christianity, most of which was barking mad. But we talk about him because of the 
science he produced because it actually affected our universe. His theology was irrelevant and has, has gone in the dustbin of history. And I think the point about this, this miracle nonsense that Dinesh was talking about is that I, sure, I can't disprove that miracles happen. I can't disprove that we weren't here, that the whole universe wasn't created 15 seconds ago and we were created here with the memories of this delightful conversation we've had for a little bit longer than that. But it's not rational to believe in that. I can't disprove it. But it's not, it's kind of irrational Dinesh, to suggest that. you're irrational. Well, first of all, I think science itself teaches us that things that seem stupendous and at one time, right, prove to be not so stupendous in another time. So, for example, the idea of making a blind man see to you and me seems preposterous, or the idea of bringing a dead person back to life. Now, what if it was the case a hundred years from now that due to technology we actually could make blind people see? Suddenly the idea that blind people can see won't be so preposterous. So, we are prisoners of the limitations of current knowledge and consider everything that we don't know to be so out of bounds that it's even unthinkable. And it is. Well, actually, until that's, we... I get paid to think about the things that we don't understand. Right. And, and I, I, I take exception to that. I think scientists realize there are limits to our knowledge and in the areas where we uh, do, haven't measured things and don't understand things there, there are a lot of open possibilities in fact we have an open mind we because we haven't assumed the answer before we ask the question which is the difference between science and religion we hear from from Michael that that, that things are are crazy we think hear from Lawrence that things are irrational this just seems to me a chant I mean you I can accept that you don't believe these things and that, and you might have thought about them but to but to refer to them as irrational or craziness when you know a third of the world believes in these things it seems to me just a, a way of ending the debate I, you know, I think I think this is ultimately not about theology. What it is about is that as we are human beings, we're thrown into the world, and we can't help but ask some basic questions like, why is there a world? What's the purpose of our life? Where are we going after we die? Now, here is actually science's answer to these three questions: don't have a clue, don't have a clue, and don't have a clue. So this is the domain of religion to try to give an account for very difficult questions on which science has nothing to say. Well, that's not true. Yeah, I wrote true. a whole book about where we, how we. No, how you we wrote came a book in. about how the universe came, but not so, why. Lawrence um, and Michael, you're comfortable with the idea that when you die, it's just done, over, nothing. Absolutely. I, it's like what it was like before you were born. When people ask what it's like after you're dead, I say, what, what was it like before you were born? We, we don't have time to settle this tonight, as I'm sure we would with another few minutes. Thank you all for joining the argument. Coming up, Bill Nye, the science guy, he has strong opinions about God versus no God and what your kids should be taught. That's coming up. life get started on Earth? Where did evolution begin? Well, near as we can figure, the ancient Earth was covered with the ocean a little over three billion years ago, and the ocean was a sort of primordial soup that living things got started in. That's Bill Nye the Science Guy. He teaches science to kids, and this year he did a video for BigThink.com that said, grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in a world inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, fine. But don't make your kids do it. That caught people's attention, as you can see from these headlines. It inspired also some believers in creationism to do their own videos to argue that he was wrong. So, Bill Nye, maybe you are wrong. You can't know for sure. But you can show that evolution's a real thing. And you can absolutely show the Earth is not six or 10,000 years old. That is, that's just wrong. So uh, I'm not going after anybody's religion. But you, we can't use tax dollars intended for science education to uh, teach this idea that the Earth is 10,000 years old as an alternative to the observable facts. I mean, that's, that's inappropriate. That's what started this whole thing. And you're kind of going after religion because you say your world becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. Well, yeah. How did, when I dig up ancient dinosaur bones or fossil bones... It's just that you're asking too much, especially of a kid who has critical thinking skills, who's observing the world around him or her. You're asking too much. It's, it's, it's inconsistent with what we observe. Then about half of Americans are pretty inconsistent. Forty-six percent believe God created human beings sometime in the last 10,000 years, says Gallup. If that's the case, 
uh, I have failed <laughs> as a science <laughs> educator. We have failed. It's just uh, these, the fact of evolution is observable and repeatable, and, and it's wonderful. It's, it's empowering. Why is learn it wonderful? How we learn. Because it, it gives you perspective of what I like to call our place in space, that we are, in a sense, one of the ways the universe has come to know itself. And that is wonderful. The process of science, the way we, we learn about nature, is the best idea humans have ever had. There's two questions that drive us all. Where did we come from and are we alone? Everyone, everyone has asked him or herself those two questions. And when you pursue that, the answers to those questions, you make these discoveries and evolution is one of them. All right, we discover these things scientifically. The Big Bang, I believe these things happened, but the... Well, the evidence is overwhelming. People just okay. don't make it up. I mean, Right, the evidence is overwhelming, but there's no evidence of, of that spark that created actual life. Why can't that well, be God? If you want to say it's God, I, I, it is unknowable. As we say, you can't test, you can't prove a negative, and so on. That is to say, I can't prove it's not, for example. And, but the Earth is not 10,000 years old. Ancient dinosaurs did walk this planet uh, up to 65 million years ago. Evolution was not a top, is not a top-down thing where there's a uh, plan, a design on a drawing board or the spiritual equivalent of a drawing board, and then organisms are created. Instead, it's bottom up that once life gets going, it creates uh, mutations and uh, these mutations lead to us. But you, you just slipped in the line once life gets going. I mean, why should we believe that wasn't done by God other than, than well, that you have a bow tie I, I, and you look you, like a science I, nerd? I am a science nerd and I encourage people to wear bow ties. They don't, they don't slip into your soup. They don't flop into your flask. But that aside, you try it. You run the tests. You examine the evidence. And I just want to say for me, as a critical thinker, or a guy who tries to think critically, a guy who works to think scientifically, to, to argue that there's some words translated, I believe, if I understand it, from Aramaic that, are, that serve as a science text, that's just not satisfactory to me. Now, if you want to claim that God started life and then three and a half billion years uh, went by and here we are, well, I, that's very difficult to disprove. Uh, on the other hand, if you say that the earth is only 10,000 years old, that's very straightforward to disprove. That's been strongly disproven. And so that's, that's what started this whole thing. We don't want to teach that to our, our scientists and engineers of the future as an alternative to the provable, discoverable facts. Thank you, Bill Nye, science guy.